Greetings class. So the final tutorial I will do today is for warranties and the new account that we're going to be looking at or new accounts is warranty expense and warranty payable. Um, and then based on the matching principle, what ends up happening, like if we have a car, I know this is an older car, uh, but if we have a car, we may sell that in January and it has a three year warranty. So your warranty expense and what what is recognized uh, from the company standpoint is monies that they have to spend um, under the, the criteria of warranty may happen in year one, two or three. But based on the matching principle, we, we need to make sure that we're picking up the actual warranty expense in the same period as the sale. So that's where we set up this warranty payable account. And there's some steps down here that we'll take a look at. But basically, this warranty payable account is a fund um, that is used at the time um, to be able to fund the actual warranty work that takes place. So we'll look at a couple examples um, as we do this, as far as the original transaction and then how the actual warranty payout takes place. So a warranty represents an expense and a liability. So we recognize the expense based on the matching principle and a liability, meaning that we, we believe that we're going to owe the warranty repairs at some point. So that liability is the warranty payable as a new account. Um, we represent that or recognize that at the time of sale because it meets the criteria for recording a contingent liability, which we've learned about in class on uh, Monday for Chapter 8. So when we do the actual recording, it's typically done, there's multiple ways to do it, but for this class, we'll do it as a percent of sales. So maybe 1% of sales uh, will come back in as warranty expense. So if we have a $10,000 sale, then we may have $100 worth of warranties associated with that $10,000 of sales. That tends to be the easiest way to estimate the amount that goes into the actual warranty expense and warranty payable account. So these are the steps. We have two different time frames that we look at. We look at at the time of sale based on the matching principle, what do we do? Um, and then when the actual warranty work is completed, which as I said, you know, when you're looking at an auto, it may be in year one, two or three, um, a, a longer time away from what the original time of the sale is. So to begin with, we have to calculate the warranty estimate, which as I said up here, typically, at least for this class, we'll use as a percent just of whatever the sales number is. Then we will debit the warranty expense because expenses, we increase those always with a debit. And then because this warranty payable is a new account under the current liabilities, the normal balance is a credit. So in order to fund that account, we have to credit that and it creates a type of fund to be used later to actually pay for the warranty work. You notice I didn't say expense it, but to actually pay for the warranty work when it occurs. So we'll, we'll, we, we will have expensed it at the time of the sale. We do not use that expense account when the actual warranty work occurs months or years later. So when the warranty work is done, we actually debit, which will decrease the warranty payable account and credit either cash or inventory based on how that warranty work is completed. So let's look at an example. So let's look at an example. Um, so warranties are estimated at 1% of sales, January sales of 10 million. So if I take 10 million times 1%, I get an estimated warranty amount of claims at $100,000. So warranty claims can be handled in multiple ways, but a number or two common methods is we issue new product, which is inventory. So we take it out of our inventory. Um, inventory is an asset, so it would have a debit balance, so we would credit the inventory to take it out and give it to whoever um, we're providing the warranty to. Or like with the autos, if we have uh, a certified repair center, which may be the dealerships and they actually do the work, uh, we just reimburse them the cash amount that it costs them to do the repair. So this is the exercise. Let's, let's first of all calculate and estimate the warranty and record the expense. So if we go back to step one, all we're doing is debiting the warranty expense, credit warranty payable, and we said it's 1% of 10 million, which is 100,000. So we'll come down here, estimate warranty liability for the period. We do $100,000 debit, and then we set up what, are, what we call our fund um, for the warranty payable, which we will use to actually fund the, uh, the warranty work that comes in the ensuing months or years. So then that's part one. So then we, we get down to part two here where we calculate the actual warranty work throughout the year based on these percentages. So 25%, we actually issued new product and 75% of the repairs were done by certified repair centers. So that would be cash. 
So we had set up our fund, which is the warranty payable, and that is a normal balance of a credit. So in order to use this money, we would have to reduce the account, which is the debit. So we go back to where we were at before as far as the second part of the steps. When the warranty work is actually completed, we will debit or reduce the warranty payable um, and typically credit cash or inventory. So that's what we're doing. So 25% is inventory. So $25,000 we take out of inventory and then cash that we paid to the certified repair centers uh, is the way that we do that. So step one, step two, we recognize, set it up based on the um, matching principle, set up the, the fund, the warranty payable account. And then when we actually perform the work, um, this is what it looks like as far as taking it back out of the warranty account and warranty payable account and then actually um, paying for it. So this is the end of this tutorial, um, last tutorial for chapter eight.